Facebook friends, to all the viewers, welcome to our church today. We worship to the Lord with the Spirit and truth. In Psalms 138, it says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward the holy temple and praise the name for the loving kindness and for thy truth. In the day when I cried, they answered me and strengthened me with the strength of my soul. Though the Lord is high, he hath respect on the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. O oh, praise you, the Lord, I will worship you. I will wish, worship you with all my heart, with all my soul. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise you, the Lord, I will worship you. I will wish, worship you with all my heart, with all my soul. In Jesus' name, Amen. You ready? Three, two. How are you doing? Holy forever first. Hello, yes. good morning, Facebook Live. And I said to all the viewers. Oh my God. And also as well on YouTube. We are we are here to worship in our in our Lord Jesus Christ with spirit and truth. Praise you the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him and ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with suddenly and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with strength instrument. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord, Almighty God. I will worship you, O Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us worship.
Lord God, in Jesus' name, we continue to praise the Lord. We are holy, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
everybody. It's the midday for us here in Australia and uh, if you're watching in Philippines it's probably uh, what would it be nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah. And uh, other places we say hello to Uganda, Nigeria and uh, so many other places that have uh, sent me emails. I really appreciate your emails and good reports and uh, if I haven't answered yet, well, we'll get around to you because we have 8,000 people on the mailing list and um, uh, many prayer requests, which is great because we'd like to hear good reports about prayers being answered either here at, at home in Australia and abroad. And uh, we have uh, a pocket of people and I haven't explained this to my family, we, uh, we have a pocket of people in America um, it looks like they may be uh, all, all in one church, I don't know, so it's a pocket of people and I, I forget about them and then they send me another email and I pray for them. And it's great, you know, to have people have confidence in us, in our, in our prayers for them, and uh, we're faithful to what God has called us to do. Sometimes we have to be reminded of what God has called us to do, because it's easy to get distracted and go on to other things. So we're primary a a uh, an evangelistic ministry. Because we're always reaching out with um, food bank and very, various different uh, things that we do, uh, but also we are very prophetic as well. So, prophet evangelist is probably the gifts that we move into. And I found that people that come and join us, even with their evangelism uh, on Saturdays. Um, the people that come and join us, they are led by the Spirit to, to join us, even if it's just for the day, that's okay, and they are prophecy motiv motivated people. And you know, <laughs> people have said to me, I've never met so many prophets in all of my Christian life, you know. And I said, well, <laughs> who, who said that prophets anyway? But the prophecy motivated people. I mean, I was ordained uh, when I was ordained. They tell me I'd move in the prophets of London, you know. So uh, it's no surprise to me, but it is a surprise to me when I get other people around and they spend some time with us and they become the same, <laughs> the same as, you know, uh, and they become, can I, can I preach? Yes. And I give them the microphone, let them preach for, you know, 10 minutes. And uh, they become evangelistic almost instantly overnight, even if they've never done it before. God gives them words, and uh, as they speak out what they believe God is saying, it is in a prophetic nature. And if you've never done that in your country or your uh, neighborhood, if you've never done that, Stay in touch with us. We're, as we pray for you, God gives us a word and we give that word in, into an email and it will edify you. It will lift you up. And if you're in the doldrums, like a, 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 what we call doldrums, it's like not necessarily a depression, but just down a little bit and you need lifting, this is the way you get that is to be on a mailing list. I'm on a mailing list of other people um, that are evangelistic, they are prophetic, and they are the people that will lift you up. Uh, lift you up out of a, 
not necessarily a depression, but with sometimes we get down in ourselves, um, not maybe uh, not praying enough sometimes, or not studying our Bible enough. You know, you can know that Bible inside out, back to front, and if you don't spend time in the Word, in the Bible, then how is God going to speak to you? He speak to you by other people? Yes. He said even a child should lead you. You know, we should humble ourselves like the children are humble. And, uh, you know, he said even a child should lead you. Um, and so, these, make no mistake about it, these are the end days, these are the days that have been prophesied about. And uh, how long or how many days do we have before Jesus returns? No one knows. Even Jesus said no one knows that under the Father, which he, you know, and, but unless you're in communication with the Father, you're not going to know. But in Amos, I think it's Amos 3, 4, he says, God does nothing without telling his prophets, you see. So if God is speaking and you're not listening, you're going to miss it. And uh, whether you're a prophet or not, or whether you're evangelist or not, or whether you're just at home reading the Bible, God wants to speak to you. And he wants to uh, have, uh, wants you to, have, uh, to hear from him and to change your life, to become closer with him. Draw close to him and he'll draw close to you and he'll speak to you. All right. Let me just pray a little bit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the anointing and your grace to come upon us today. Let your grace and favour be upon us, Lord God. We spoke a lot about favour last week, so we're not going to cover that again. But what I want to explain is that sometimes I look into the work that I've done uh, and want to improve it. And uh, one of the things I looked at uh, is, are you in Christ? Is I'm, I'm encouraged by God. Uh, I mean, even though I put the book together myself and I wrote it, um, I'm encouraged by it because I know that I didn't really write it. It was the anointing of God came on me and I wrote things in there that uh, I can still learn from today, you know. Um, Are You in Christ is one of, one of my books. Uh, I probably have about 20 of them over the years. Uh, since 1984 to now, I probably have about 20 books. And um, I say that in, in all humbleness uh, because really, I, I'm not um, gifted enough to, to write a book unless I have the anointing of God. And uh, I'm just not that sort of person that would write a book anyway uh, unless I have the, unless I'm walking in the obedience of God. So sometimes we can know the Word and the Word will not set us free if we're in the wrong spirit. You know, if you have a spirit of pride upon you and you quote the Word expecting that the Word will set you free, it will not. Because God hates pride. And uh, so, don't let pride lift you up. You'll be lifted with humbleness. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and He will lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. Higher and higher and He will lift you up. Okay, I looked into the Are You in Christ? 
And I opened up the PDF, you can download this uh, free. Uh, and I looked into the PDF and I thought just the ending of it, I could say it a little bit better. And I thought, well, I'll just mess with it a little bit. And to my surprise, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't alter what was already there without um, doing the whole thing over again. But I tried. Anyway, what happened, and that was according to Amazon, not my uh, choice, but what happened was I finished up with Are You in Christ Revised Part 2. You know, I thought that I could re revise it a little bit and then click on the uh, the, the go button, you know, the green button, uh, the uploading button, and it would upload, and uh, you know, I more or less could make changes. But no, the uh, afterwards when I realised what was happening, it was like I uploaded a, a new book altogether. And so, it's not a new book, but it is a revised version of Are You in Christ? And uh, what I, I'm going to tell you. What, are, what the changes are, it's not a real change, but more of an expound, expound on what is already there. And uh, in amongst it is the baptism of fire and, um, and water baptism. But uh, are you in Christ revised part two? by Reverend Dr. Brian Richards, Baptism of Fire, paperback, in large print, as from the 20th of September. This large print can be yours, just simply download it when you see it. But you go to trafficbuilder3.com and you'll be led to the website which is Divine Connections of Christ but don't expect you to remember the title because it's with an X not with a CT so don't be swayed with that but just put into the browser Traffic Builder 3 number 3 dot com and you'll be led to the website where you can download Amazon. If you if it doesn't go straight to Amazon, it will go to the website, and you'll see a, a button there, the amazing Amazon, and uh, you click on that, and you'll be directed to the books. And as you go through the books, you'll see certain books are free to download, and so if you download them freely, you can print them out freely. You know. And so that's just, uh, you know, if you visit the website and you can't afford to buy a book, and some countries uh, that can't afford to buy a book because our dollars are higher than their, you know, uh, value, and therefore, but if you're American, you remember the a pocket full of Americans I spoke about? It? Well, they're interested in that too, so they can get that uh, hard copy uh, very, very cheaply. And so, <clears throat> there's nothing expensive there, and as many free downloads that you can get. So I just want to go through just a little bit of what I changed, or added, should say. It wasn't changed, it was added to. Expanded upon, and so forth. So a little bit here. Father God, I just thank you that you can minister to people through your, your word. As I uh, read your word, I pray that people will be touched, people will be healed, people will be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Your word will go forth with power and authority. It will not return void or empty. It will accomplish that which you do in Jesus' name. So I just want to say, God is for you. He's not against you. 
<clears throat> you know, the in in John, John called himself the apostle of whom Jesus loved. And we know that this apostle John, he was often called the apostle of love. He just, you know, he, he loved on Jesus and Jesus loved him back, you know. And uh, he seemed to be favorite sometimes. Well, God doesn't have any favorites, but I tell you, you, you get into the, the love of God through the gospel of John and you feel, you sense that you're not alone. All of a sudden the anointing has caught you up and you be basking in the anointing of God. So, you know, you want to know where to get the anointing, you get it from the Word, but what part of the Word is John, okay? And that's the Gospel of John, and also the Epistles of John, you know. You got the Gospel of John, and then you got one, two, three Epistles of John, and the letters that Paul wrote to John. Okay, God has for you, John, this is what God has for you, for you today. God is for you, and what He has for you is the anointing. Now listen to this. God, uh, John called himself the, the disciple that Jesus loved in, in John 21 7. Uh, this should be your confession as well. Who are you? The Bible says that. You are the one God loves and is talking to individually or a whole, both, you know. And so you meditate in the Word day and night and you will know, you feel, you sense that God has this Word specially for you. To be, um, interpretation from the heart. That's the, way, that's the only way to explain it. Okay. And this should be your confession as well. Who are you? You are God's. You are the one God loves. God is love and He loves you. You can't be any more loved than when you are loved by love. <laughs> God is love. So. so when you're loved by love, God says in Jeremiah 31 and verse 3, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness I have drawn you. God is drawing you into a love relationship with Him. He enjoys loving you, He delights in blessing you, and showing you mercy. He is thinking about you today and he's got a plan for your life. In Jeremiah 29 11 is he'll lead you and guide you in the ways that you should go and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He cares so much about you that he keeps count of the number of hairs that are on your head. Lord, I've lost a few. I pray for a replacement in Jesus' name. His eyes roam to and fro across the earth looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants. You know, lots of times I hear that word servant being bounced around in the body of Christ saying, I'm a servant of the Lord. Well, you can serve the Lord. Sure, be a servant of the Lord. But you're not called to be a servant of the Lord. You're called to be a son. And so he says, um, you no longer on their behalf. Jesus said, I no longer do I call you servants. No longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. So if you're a servant of the Lord, you're saying you don't know what the master is doing. Okay? And, uh, but I have called you friends for all things that I heard of my father I have made known to you. You 
did not choose me, I chose you. See that? You didn't choose me, I chose you. All you did is responded to the call. You see that? God is calling people and if they respond, they're going to be blessed, they're going to have the anointing, they're going to have the, um, the, the anointing for the call. All right? Uh, John 15 and verse 15 it says, I am a true man of God and a leader in my field of expertise. With spiritual knowledge that is the second to none. I am a role model to others and normally would never involve myself in anything of this kind. This is how I came to God. I never involved myself in anything of this kind. Uh, however, the world is changing and it's my time to stand up and be counted in all the community doors that will open up to me. That will open up now that I have made up my mind that I am the one. I am the one that will make the difference to people's lives, to tell them that money is not the root of all evil, like people say. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And I pray that every chance that I get to prosperity it is the will of God because my motive to improve humanity and to get rid of poverty from this world. That's my motive. I pray that I am the one that God can use to help people to be free from poverty. Now I know I'm talking to people out there because they've shared their needs and I'm praying for your needs okay he said uh, but I pray that I am the one that God can use to help people to help you um, uh, I am the one that God can use to help people to be free from poverty thinking and to regain and to restore our dignity in the world and to show real Christianity. Are you in Christ? Is the question that most preachers will never ask because they just presume that they are in Christ if one believes. That's not how you receive the anointing. That's not how you receive the anointing. That's not how you receive the anointing. However, the Bible clearly is asking the question to believers. My name is Reverend Dr. Brian Richards. The doctor of what, you might say? The doctor of divinity. I have the certificate and uh, I didn't go all the way to USA to get it. I did a, a course here online and they sent me a certificate of doctor of divinity. Okay, but I, I am proud to display it on my wall because I work for it, okay? And God said, study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? So I did that. And you can do that too. Um, Raising money for victims of flood and earthquake uh, in Philippines, Southeast China Sea, the Word of Faith Ministries is a registered charity doing an evangelistic work, doing evangelistic ministry that visits Philippines as much as they can. I used to visit uh, Philippines one or two times per year when I was single. 
now that I'm married and I got other responsibilities, I get there as often as I can. As much as each year at least, sometimes it was twice a year when I was single, to preach salvation, healing and deliverance, these videos go freely to all the mailing lists. So make sure that you're on my mailing list by sending us an email, Rev Brian Patrick is my middle name, so Rev Brian Patrick at gmail.com. Send me an email, I'll put you on the mailing list, you'll be prayed for each day uh, by uh, by a team uh, of people that we ask to pray for us and ask to pray for this ministry. Now I'm the only one that will see your prayer requests. And if God uh, wants me to ask other people to pray for this particular need, then they'll pray with me and they'll be my wife and son. But uh, apart from that, no other ministers will see, but they will hear me pray, and they will join me. And if God gives a special message for you, you'll receive a word of prophecy through emails. So be on the mailing list. And uh, the mailing list, these videos go freely to the mailing list uh, with free e-books download and uh, purchasing the hard copy books will go into the ministry um, that we call to give food and um, help people in other countries as God um, gives us we can give them. Okay, so did you read the apostle? No. Okay, so I'm going to get my son to do a little bit of reading because he's, he's, he's a good, good reader. Uh, do we, I'm going to just read this first, uh, a little bit of John, and then I'll ask Joshua to come. It's after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of uh, Tiberias. Um, this is after, the, of course, the, the resurrection. And, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, Jesus kept walking through the wall, did you know that? <laughs> uh, other times he walked on the sea and he did all kinds of things that was impossible because it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the natural, it was spirit that he, his whole ministry was, was you know, depend on the, the Spirit of God. Now, before the cross, Jesus did nothing really supernatural otherwise, uh, um, other than the, the covenant that goes under Abrahamic covenant. Right? Even under the Abrahamic covenant, they could get healed by the stripes of Jesus. Him, but he, did, he never quoted that to begin because they have to die first. You know. But under the Abrahamic covenant, there was healing. Remember, he said to the woman that was bowed over 38 years, he says, Shouldn't you be the daughter of Abraham? Shouldn't you be healed? And she, would, she thought about different things that the Bible said. Mm -hmm. yeah, it should be. Wow, yeah. And so, through that awareness, she stood up straight. And she says, so be it, be it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he didn't pray for her, he just commanded the, the covenant to be exalted. You know what I mean? Wow. It was already, the healing is already paid for in the Old Testament before Jesus went to the cross. You know? And so a lot of things that Jesus did that they said was miracles, it was a part of their covenant. The new covenant didn't start until Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected and at the day of Pentecost was the birth of the church that we know it today. You see, but he, some things was already uh, 
uh, already spoke into being, you only got to look at Deuteronomy 28, and the first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 is blessing. Blessed are you because of what? Because of the covenant that God made with Abraham. So we blessed by Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all down the lineage until we get to Jesus. Jesus died to make a new covenant of better promises, but that was already promised. And so we are living in the days that even the old Jews that died uh, would like to be seen these days. Abraham rejoiced to see the day of the Lord. He seen it by faith. He thought, praise God, I'm a part of this because of me. There's a new covenant coming into the world. And because of you today, there's a new covenant coming into the world because you're reinforcing what Jesus has already done. All you have to do is speak it into being. <coughs> so, <clears throat> John 21 and verse 2, he says, There were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, uh, Nathaniel uh, of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I'm going fishing. See, he got a little bit depressed over the situation. He didn't know how to handle himself. He was told how to do all this, but he just, uh, on a down day, said, I'm going fishing. And they said, we'll, they said, we'll go with you. We also go with you. And uh, went forth and entered into the, the ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. You know, catch fish at night. Uh, you know, these big trailer boats, they go out at night and they catch the fish. <clears throat> but, uh, so they, they, they tailed all night they, with, with nets and um, they caught nothing. Nothing, when I say nothing, it could be one or two fish, but there was nothing to speak of. I mean, they, they used to go fishing and, and sell the fish to make money. You know, that was their living. And he says, I'm going fishing. And they said, okay, we'll go, go with you. And they went out and the, uh, he said, they went forth and entered into the ship immediately. And at that night they caught nothing. And when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore uh, but the disciples knew him not, that it, they knew not that it was Jesus. And when Jesus said unto them, Children, what have you, do you have in the meat? See? And, and they answered, No. And he said unto them, Cast your net on the other side of the ship, and you will find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in, for the multitude of fish that came. See, they would be, would be obedient to what Jesus said. Immediately they were blessed with fish. They have been fishing all night and they've got nothing. And uh, immediately they were blessed with fish because they cast the net on the other side. Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard of this, it was the Lord, he girded himself with the fish's coat because he, do, he, he was naked. Now it doesn't mean that he was totally naked, but he took his fishing coat off to do the work, you know, get hot and sweaty and you know, take it, your jacket off. Uh, and did cast himself into the sea and the other disciples came in the little ship. So they had a big boat and a little boat. I, I think the big boat would have been more like the trawler boat than the other ones. It was 
just smaller boats. Well, they were not far from the land, but as it were, 200 cubits dragging the, the net with fishes. As soon as they, uh, uh, as soon then as they were come into the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid upon it, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have caught. And Simon went up and drew the net to, uh, the net to land. Uh, full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. Uh, hundred and fifty three. So that, that means something like that. I forgot what it was. I don't want to emphasize it. For all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. So the the there were so many fish that the net could have broken, but it, it didn't. It just, you know, held together. And uh, Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of his disciples just asked him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. They knew it was the Lord, but they were frightened to ask if you, who are you, you know. So, you can understand that Jesus uh, appeared many times and uh, not one time did they ask him, who are you? Because they, they felt it, they felt the anointing. The, when a, a, a real man of God comes into the room, you know it, you sense it, you feel it, and that's the anointing. Jesus. Then come and take it of the bread and give it them uh, a fish. And likewise, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. And when they had dined with Jesus, he said to Simon Peter, Son of John, Jonas, love thou me? more than these and he said unto him yea lord you know us that i love thee and he said unto them feed my lambs and he said unto him again a second time simon son of jonas love thou me he said unto him yea lord thou knowest that i love thee he said unto him feed my sheep <coughs> And he said unto him a third time, and said, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me. Peter was grieved the third time, because he said unto him a third time, love thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Truly I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walk with the thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whether thou would not. He spoke of signifying by what death he should be glorifying God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seized the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned unto the breast at supper times, and said, Lord, which is he that betrays thee? Peter, seeing him, says to Jesus, Lord, What shall this man do? Jesus said unto them, If I will that you tarry till I come, what is to thee? Follow that me. Then when it is saying abroad, 
among the brethren that disciples should not die. Yet Jesus said unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come. What is it to be? So he said unto him, um, all the disciples will die uh, except for John. Now why was that? Well, there's another place that talks about John being boiled in oil and uh, didn't die. And uh, because he didn't die like the, the rest of them, they put this man, John, on an island of Patmos, or Patmos, and he wrote the book of Revelations. So when you are walking in love, you're walking in the anointing of God, so much that they, they can't hurt you. John didn't die when they wanted him to die. And uh, so they put him on the Isle of Patmos and he wrote the book of Revelations. But he, 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 he was no record of his death, <laughs> even today. No record of his death. So, <clears throat> there's no record of Moses' death either, not really. We presume that he went up the mountain and died. You know? But if no, no body, nobody found a body. Elijah, he got carried away in a, 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 chari a fiery chariot. Um, you know, there's quite a few people that they never seen death. Why? Because they were walking in love, that's why. When you're walking in the perfect love of God, and you're walking in the anointing of God, that's when we'll see the, the, the Word of God being manifest. He said, nothing by any means shall harm you. And people stand on that scripture today, but they're not walking in the anointing for it. And they get disappointed when things do happen to good people. Uh, even preachers, they they get sick sometimes, or they they make a mistake and they pay the consequences. And um, but if they can manifest love, if you meditate day and night in the ways of God, what you meditate on, it will come to pass. So, you know, it's in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, You meditate my word day and night, and, you, and observe to do it. You'll make your way prosperous, and you'll have good success. Well, this word today, you can meditate on the Gospel of John and the Epistles of John. And I'll just read one more scripture, and I'll pass it on to the next person that's going to read and then I'm sure Ellen has got a lot more to say I'll pass it back um, this is 1 John chapter 2 um, one John chapter 2 from 24 and a few scriptures there. It says, let us, let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning, that if that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that has promised us even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Right. <coughs> Things that seduce you. Now, just like God sends His Spirit to you when you're born again, you become spiritually born again, the devil tries to seduce you with his uh, evil spirits. He said, so these things have I written unto you concerning 
then that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, that you need not any man teach you, but the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is not no there's no lie there, no exaggeration there. You know, there's no no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. And now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him and his coming. But if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteous is born of him. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. See, we call sons of God. But then that's not enough. You go further and it says, and therefore the world knows us not because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. When are we the sons of God? Now. now. See, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Mm. Now, you know, I've heard women say, well, I'm a daughter. <laughs> mm. And uh, somebody came up to Jesus and said, this woman, she married three times and her husband dies twice and she lost her husband third time she got married and uh, looks like they'll stay together until death but when the resurrection comes which man is this woman married to he said to her to, he said to the, the person that was asking he says, in the resurrection, now this is for all of us, in the resurrection there's neither male nor female, we're all the body of Christ. Mm. You understand that? So, there's no male or female in the spirit. When it says sons of God, he's talking about sons or manifestation of sons of God spiritually. Okay? So, he said, now, beloved, now are we the sons of God. But it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and every man, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. So you meditate on these words and the word cleans you. It says in, in um, John 15 and verse 3 or 4, it says, my word cleans you. And this is what cleans us up if we allow the word of God as we meditate on the word of God. And whosoever commits sin transgresses the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. But we know that he was manifest to take away the sins. And in him there is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sins not, and whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither knows him. Now, little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. But he that commits sin is of the devil, and the devil, because the devil sent sins from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. How about that? If this, in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil also, whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loves not his brother. See? And it goes on. And he says that, you know, 
If you don't love your brother, then you're a liar, you don't love God either. You know, virtually to do the words. <coughs> But marvel not, don't be surprised, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren that we, that loved not his brother unto death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer and you know that no murderer has eternal life. So don't hate anybody. Hate the sin. God doesn't hate people. He hates the sin that is in people. You see? And it's alright not to love them if they're ugly and they're sinful, but it's the sin that you don't love, but you do love the people you want to save. You love the people that you want to save. Because God so loved the world that He gave His only we got the sun. We just read that this. Amen. So I'll pass this on now. And if you want to read the true apostle, the sent one, you can read that for us. Uh, and then out of that we finish up. Which one? I didn't even see the song, did I? Which one? Read. What is a true apostle? I don't know. Uh, my name is Joshua Brian Richards. Today I'm going to read what is a true apostle. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to the Vinya Game Wish on YouTube. Hello to Facebook. You can find our thoughts at tracking with a and subscribe to our main list at revbrian.com.au. What is a true apostle? Much ado is being made about modern day apostles and prophets. We hear of new apostolic networks and ministries with the impartation meetings and apostolic anointings. Everybody who is somebody in the body of Christ is now an apostle. Even the prophets are becoming apostles. Maybe the pastors are becoming prophets to fill the vacuum. Apostles are people who are sent by God to a specific person or for a specific mission. We are often used the word missionary in place of apostle because of the connotation. By definition, an apostle is a sent one. The Lord reminded me of a very special apostle that I spent time with early in my Christian walk. His name was Tatra. He was probably in his mid-fifties when his wife and I met him. He had been a laborer for most of his life, barely spoke English and was illiterate. He and his wife, Elfido, had been Catholic most of their lives until meeting Jesus and being baptized in the Holy Spirit by a supernatural encounter. When Tacho was first baptized in the Holy Spirit, he suddenly was able to read the Bible, both in English and in Spanish. We spent a lot of time with Tacho and his wife mostly in the ghettos of Mexico. I remember being told when Tacho stood up in the streets to preach the gospel. His wife would fall to her knees and cry out to God, bowing in the heavenlies, and the glory of God will fall on those filthy streets. Demons screamed and left. People were healed and delivered, which is converted to Jesus. It was a glorious time. Edith and I learnt through their example the role of husband and wife in a spiritual war that battled for the souls and hearts of men. I never heard Tatra speak anything except Jesus, even in conversations with others on the team. Jesus was his passion, his only vision his entire life. His wife was always right beside him, supporting, battling, praying for needs. What a powerful team that God had put together as a witness to his wife's life and glory. These simple people had the most profound effect on our lives. They never elevated themselves in any manner, were totally humble, and poured themselves out to the poor people that they were sent to. When they weren't on the streets, they pastored some of the little churches that met in shacks and byways. They were always giving, feeding the poor, taking clothing and necessities, even giving food and Christmas presents to sometimes thousands of children. Edith and I didn't speak much Spanish, but we always knew what was being preached by the Spirit. Once Tatcha taught me that the Spirit had told him to blow on someone and they fell down in the Spirit, he was humbled and amazed that God would use him like that. He truly did what the Spirit told him. Nobody ever told Tatcha that he was an apostle. He only thought of himself as a humble servant of this wonderful God who had saved him and filled him with his Spirit. 
I believe he served faithfully until he died as an unknown soldier of the Lord. Parcher was the greatest example of an apostle that I have ever personally known. Though he grew up with several others who had similar callings, Parcher was the one who was at of the least value to the world, but of immense value to the kingdom of God. I have no idea how many souls were touched by the Lord through this precious saint. If I had asked him, I am sure he would have had no idea how he had touched them. He only knew that the Lord had touched them. I suspect that hundreds, perhaps thousands of folks had a personal encounter with Jesus as Tatra crossed their path. Jesus working in, in a simple, devoted, humble vessel that hardly was aware of anything other than his Lord. If I could send a message to Tatra in heaven, I would say, Tatra, I want to be like you when I grow up. God bless you all, and God bless Tatra. Amen. <coughs> we'll just sing a little song to keep the anointing going. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all. Father God, I know that God has seen many healings and many miracles. And I pray, Lord, that you can do a miracle right through 
her friends right through the cameras, right through into people's lounge rooms, into their churches, wherever people are listening right now. I pray that they receive the anointing of God, of the healing, deliverance, and above all, Lord God, that they would be saved by receiving your anointing in Jesus' name. You say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe Jesus died on the cross. And Calvary. And Calvary. And died for me. And died for me. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my heart. And make me born and again. Make me born again. I believe I receive. I believe and I receive. When I pray. When I pray. I ask you to forgive all of my sins. I ask you to forgive all my sins. Those that I know about. Those I don't know. And those about. that I've forgotten about. And those I've forgotten about. I pray that all sin will be forgiven. And I'll be washed clean. And I'll be washed clean. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. I pray for healing and deliverance and uh, we thank you Lord that your word will not return void or empty. It will accomplish that which you please. Those people that reach out for healing, receive the healing now in Jesus' name. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, a sound of mind. Messiah, those who doesn't know me, my name is Erdina Pictures. I come from Philippines and I speak Messiah and I speak a little bit of Tagalog. But I would like to share with you this song, No Longer Sleeps. Oh, the deliverance 
from my enemies till all my fears are Sabi saya pernah 
ang ginuwala na ito maghatag kung espiritu sa kahadlo, kung espiritu sa gugma, you know, spirit of fear, gana sa gigna sa spirit of fear, spirit of love, joy, joy, peace, and malinaw ang huna-huna. See? Huna siya. We are the children of God. And then, have faith in God. Like, like, and I'd like to share with you about faith in God. If you keep your trust in God, if you keep believing in God, keep on standing firm, and without no doubt, you can receive an answer for you. You know, madawat na to ang ang answer for you. Kung doon na kayo pagsalig sa atong dinamis ko, sige, hindi ko ito magdua-dua. No doubt and no fear. You know? Salig sa atong dinamis sa atong dinamis sa Kristo. Na no wavering. Jesus, have compassion. Have mercy on us. Magiloy ko ang atong dinamis. Diligid ka niya pakyasong sa atong mga hanggang ka niya. Kung doon na gayon kayo pagsalig ka niya. Trust in the Lord always. Say always. Not not today only, but all the time. Even when we're facing trials, trust na ta sa binuo na ang binuo mo answers sa imong prayers. His love never fails. Ang iyang gugma, diligid mapakyas. Diligid mapakyas ang iyang gugma. His love endures forever. Ang iyang gugma, malungtarang gayon. Malungtarang gayon. He can move the mountain. You know, the mountain where we're talking about is sickness. Ang mountain nga atong gi, gi atubang. We've been facing fires. No na siya mountain. Sickness. Sakit-sakit. Depression. Loneliness. Hopeless. Poverty. No na siya mountain. But we trust God. He is. He can move the mountain. It says. Savior, He can move the mountain. Not sure. You know, one, um, I was singing lately. He can say, He can, He can move the mountain. The mountain might be sickness. All those mountain, He can move that. It says in the Bible in Mark 11:23, it says, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea." Rebuke on those mountains. Be the place away from me, you know. I was, I was sick, you know. I, I lost my voice. I was always coughing. But I never, never refused to praise God. You know, you see me. You saw me, I was coughing. But I never, never stopped praising God because I know there is a healing in the power in the name of Jesus. I receive healing. Coughing place away from me. Rebuke. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Christ has redeemed us from the course of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or any disease that is instantly in the name of Jesus. And I truly believe that I have faith in Jesus. Through my faith, completely, I can receive healing completely right now. You know, I remember, I remember when, uh, when I was a teenager, I, I used to be a choir, a choir member of the church. Church in Philippines, you know, and we have practiced two, two times so that we have a very good outcome of a choir. We, I used to be a part of choir, huge numbers of members of the choir, uh, 50, 30 or 50 members. And then our choir director, we, they make it sure that we practice twice, make it sure good outcome, you know. So I went there, I was coughing, coughing. oh, coughing. And my my director said to me, I don't think you can you can uh, practice that earlier. You're always coughing. You're always coughing. I don't need. Uh, you have to rest and don't don't practice because we we have to sing very good in this coming Sunday. We have because I said to her, I said I believe that I will receive healing. <laughs> I will keep singing and I will receive healing. <laughs> and she's she's laughing with me. <laughs> and then, how can I practice? So I practice, I practice, practice. And I, my, my coughing is getting worse, you know, getting worse. I just said, uh, need, need a rest, I mean, don't, don't involve, don't, uh, don't worry. And you will, uh, you have to take medication, take a rest. You know, she's worried about me because I was coughing. 
And you know what? I speak. I said, God can heal me. Don't worry. This this gift that God has given to me, I'm willing to serve Him. And this is my commitment to, to, to join a choir, to serve with the Lord. And then on the following day, we have practice again. I, I, I come back to my voice. I sing a song and I said, What you did? And God healed me. That's it. Through my faith. And then it works with really. you. It says, it says the prayer of the righteous person is very effective and very powerful. You know, in Bisaya pa, kung matinun ande ang iyong pag-ampul sa atong ginong si Kristo, effective mo diya ina siya. It really works and powerful makagagamong gayon. So, mura siya. I speak the word. I said, I don't think I can see it. I can see it today because I'm coughing. But I remember. I remembered my experience before, and I speak, I speak faith. Pagsalig sa atong ginong sa Kristo, whatever it is. Kung doon na kay pagsalig sa ginong sa Kristo, walay duha-duha, ma-receiveing mo ang healing, ang healing, whatever it is. Sickness that you've been facing. I receive healing in Jesus' name. Faith in God's word will change the symptoms, whatever symptoms that you have. If you're coughing, ah, oh, you might have like this, like that. Uh, so, so many people, ah, oh, you have the symptoms, you have this, like this. I don't believe that. I don't believe symptoms because we are Christian. I have faith in Jesus. I said, I receive healing right now. I receive bigger place away from me. Coughing place away from me. Whatever sickness, whatever your sickness you have, rebuke in the name of Jesus. His name is so powerful. Ang iyang pangalan may may kahum. Powerful. You know? His name is so powerful. Ang ngalan na makagagamong ngayon. The devil flies away from you. Even his name. Devil flies away from you. Flies away from you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. Sickness, get away from you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's why I love, I love Jesus. He is really real. He can do a miracle in your life. Call him and he will show you. If faith in God's word will change you. Everything will change you. Will bring money to get the bills paid. Will will uh, God will bless you in Jesus through your faith. You know, one time uh, before I uh, before I will we will close our our Facebook live today. I would like to share with you through your faith. You know, one time. Uh, but Brian said to me, he's jumping with joy, he said, early net, we paid all the bills, you know, we are free in death, you know, and we rejoice, thank you Lord, thank you, thank you Jesus, and then when we open our fridge, you know, um, a little bit of food there, empty, close to empty, and we look at each other, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we rejoice, and then we in a way, and then we look at each other, and then Brian said to me, we pray, Elena, we pray that someone knock the door and give our, give our bless up, you know, financially or whatever, so that we can buy food here. And go, oh yeah, and then through our faith, we can, like, God answered our prayer, and we, we, we pray together, you know. This one is really test me that God is really real if we have faith in Him. Following day, someone knocked the door. <laughs> and when I open our best, one of the best friends, you know, <laughs> hello, uh, I come here, you know, I come here. Uh, I think you need something, you know. And then we look at each other and they give us like a gift card, you know, worth of $250 grocery. <laughs> we look at each other. How did you know that we need <laughs> and he's, he's listening to the voice of the Lord. That's fight. That's fight. Whatever it is, through your fight, you can receive answer for you. You can receive whatever it is. Sickness, financially, emotionally, spiritually, God will listen in. God is waiting for you. He said, call me and I will show you the great and mighty things which you do not know. Thank you. Thank you for all our our Facebook friends, to all the viewers, and also while we're recording this Facebook, we're recording also as well in YouTube. So have a look, check our YouTube, Ernie Richards or Rick Brian Richards, and give a comment and give 
be subscribers because you can help our ministry. If you are, if you are sub, you sub, subscribe us, we, you can help us our ministry. You know, and we continue our missionary work, especially in the Philippines. So thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Click, thank you. Click the bell on the uh, recording. Yeah. Click the bell, and you automatically get our next video. Yeah, YouTube in YouTube. Uh, be our subscribers. Thank you. We love.